Good evening, folks. This is David Hurley of EasyChessTips.com, your pub chess bluffer, reporting to you on, uh, where are we, on New Year's Eve of 2019. This is the last chess video by the pub chess bluffer of the decade. And I'm going to report on the final game of the year that I played with my regular opponent, Dr. M, uh, earlier this month, in which he was white and opened with E4, and I responded with d6, as I will show in a minute. But I have an end of the year report on my patented um, d4 opening system, uh, memory system uh, harvesting. Har I've harvested 184 variations uh, uh, for when you open with d4 as white from my man John Watson's book, A Strategic Chess Opening for White. And I have got the basics. I haven't gone through every single, every variation right to the end, because there'd be far more than 184 as it tail as it as variations turn into variations later down the line. But for the first five to 15 moves of, of each of the major variations, I have created a whole set of um, notes based on those, as you can see here, stuff like this and like uh, this. This is a page about the Benoni and uh, what have we got here? Assorted systems and so on. And each one is numbered. And what I've been doing over the last uh, few days is linking each of the numbers to a code word using what I've what is called the mnemonic major system of keywords. Now, there's a whole set of keywords available on the internet from, from 1 to 100. But once you get above that, you have to, you're sort of on your own. And that was slowing me down a bit. But today I finished it off. So I now have 184 keywords linked to the each, each number from 1 to 184. So eventually, um, I should be able to remember if this goes well. Uh, for example, what do we have here? We have... Um, we have a fairly weak one, as I remember. 115 is called the tea towel, which sounds a bit limp. Well, it is a bit of a limp opening. So we've got the domino, which is 132. We've got we got Iwo Jima, that's 63. We've got we got Matt, that's uh, Matt is 31. Uh, these aren't random words, but uh, each each uh, the consonants uh, link up to the digits. So as I think I've said before, number one is T or D. Uh, number two is N, number three is M, number four is R, number five is L, number six is J or J sounds in general. Uh, number seven is K sounds or hard C sounds, or it can be G sounds as well. Uh, number eight, where are we with number eight? Little jaw key, fee. Lum number eight is Fi or V sounds, and number nine is P sounds, and, and, and zero is S or Z. And so you can put, you get a number. So, for example, number, let's see, number 25 in our sequence will be called the nail. I think it's called the nail. And it involves a sharp bishop move or something. The nail, 25. Let's see how I'm doing. 25, 25 down there. Where has it gone? Is the nail. So, in this way. So, I hope to. Uh, have this system down a pat uh, within the next six months or so. But anyway, I've achieved my goal for this holiday, which is to get the whole system down on paper. Uh, over the next year, I'll be focusing on building a similar repertoire or a repertoire of similar uh, length or variation for, for black. And as you'll see in tonight's game, or the game I'm showing you tonight, I actually need to build a repertoire for black. I have a very basic knowledge of what I want to do with black, but I don't know it in any depth. And that shows up in this game I'm about to show you. But I will also be spending the next uh, few months turning those keywords into uh, memorable stories that link into the movement patterns of each variation. Um, I've already got some for the early stages where I tell stories based on the moves that connect to the keywords. Um, and <laughs> it seems to me to be a reasonably effective way to remember the variations. Um, now, I'm not saying that this is the only way that you should study chess, and many people will tell you that you shouldn't focus on memory and memory systems at all, but very often those people seem to be people who have already got a huge amount of experience, so kind of don't need to focus on that at all. 
Um, for me, I want to focus on, on learning these opening variations for white, learning a similar amount of variations for black. Uh, with black, I'll be using uh, mainly the D6 opening, as you'll see here, but also uh, against E4 openings, I'll hold in reserve um, the uh, French defense response beginning with E6, so D, uh, E4, E6. Later on, as white, I might well have a look at uh, Ginger GM's Joe Barva London as a nice, nice twist to the D4, uh, to D4 openings and uh, see where we go from there. At some, time, at some stage further down the line, um, if this is working well and it's helping me to develop my opening, opening strength, uh, then I'll have a look at uh, E4, but that, that's, that's not a project for this coming year for 2020 and probably not for 2021 because once I've got the two opening systems uh, in place, I then want to focus much more on Jeremy Silman's um, courses, uh, Jeremy Silman on re how to reassess your chess and also his other amusing book about the amateur mind, which is very enjoyable. Those really teach you how to think about chess, um, not using memory systems or anything like that. Uh, but I also want to use his book on the end game and do a lot more end game study. So those are really my four approaches, uh, four basic approaches to, to improving my chess, apart from playing as much as I can over the board and on the internet. Um, my studies are with creating an opening system for white, creating an opening system or two for black, uh, then study the middle game and the end game in some detail. And the aim of everything I'm doing uh, as a chess player and here on YouTube and on my blog is to help anybody who's below, who, who's just an average player, perhaps with no ranking or with a ranking somewhere in the 1500s or lower, or possibly the 1600s and lower, to um, learn from my mistakes, see what I'm doing, get some inspiration, and, uh, and uh, hopefully improve your chess through that, at least partly through that. So that's that. Uh, what else was I going to say? I don't think there's anything else I was going to say apart from Happy New Year, and let's get on with the game in hand here. Ah, so my opponent opened with e4 and I responded with d6. And we have uh, d4, knight to f6, and knight to c3. Now, this looks as if we're heading towards black's uh, hoped for setup, or one of black's hoped for setups with this um, d6 repertoire which is the uh, Antoshin variation. Now, the next move in the Antoshin variation is uh, e, it's a quick e5 move. And then uh, there are a couple of things that can happen from there. One of them, my opponent played uh, knight to f3. And you can see that Lichess is recommending that black immediately take uh, the d4 pawn. However, I had forgotten about that, and I think this is the third time in a row that I have forgotten forgotten about the basic problem here, which is really quite poor, that um, here the black pawn is under attack from both the white pawn and the white knight, and so um, either should take the pawn or, as you can see, a recommendation to defend the pawn with the knight here, also developing another piece. I have discussed this before, I'm sure, but uh, in the heat of play, I completely forgot about that and jumped a move. Rem <laughs> this move comes one move later, really, in the Antoshin variation. Um, I'm vulnerable now to um, this pawn being taken. And as you can see, uh, advantage is firmly with white. However, the Good thing about us pub chess bluffers is that we're often playing outside of uh, clubs and outside of competitions, where um, we're not often we're not punished so so vigorously as we might be in those environments. And uh, this is what happens: we have a bishop to c4 move, a perfectly reasonable developing move, but it didn't take advantage of my weakness here. And so now I do basically what I've done is I put these two moves out in the wrong order, but I haven't been punished for it. Um, 
the, in this game, we get a lot of fluctuation over here. It's quite a fun game. Uh, however, I have survived. I still have something like the um, Antoshin variation. Uh, we're roughly in the peak defense here, uh, back in play. But I don't think anything else here happens anything like the Antoshin variation. I hope to improve my quality of players black in the opening during the course of 2020. That is one of my goals for next year. Okay, what happens next? Uh, so I brought my knight. I moved my knight again, which puts us back into this weak position here. I move my knight away, but I'm attacking the bishop. So the bishop first has to move back. And then I, I decide to pin the knight to the queen so that if we do get an exchange down here, uh, probably... Probably, I, I would probably take the knight first. I'm not sure how I would do that. Let's see what happens. Um, if we have a variation in which white takes. And then, should I take the knight first? Uh, the knight is pinned by the bishop. So what happens if I just take back here? We might actually get the queen exchange, which is another version of the uh, repertoire uh, that I play, or I'm, I'm attempting to build. Uh, attempting to play but here because uh, the minor piece has been cleared from the back rank we can just take the queen with the with the rook which would seem to be quite a nice thing to do um, giving us access to this file okay so that's what could have happened had play gone that way but it didn't because my opponent after this set of moves here I, I pin the knight to the queen. We then get h3, um, pushing pushing my, my bishop away or inviting the exchange. I go for the exchange and something rather pleasing happens. Um, yes, my opponent takes with the pawn, opening up a nice road to the king. Uh, let's check here check this file here yeah. one of my drunken arrows there we go check this file here a nice open file aiming at the king and that is the file that i will now attempt to exploit so i was surprised my opponent didn't take with the queen in that uh, in uh, as the preferable choice there however it didn't happen so i now um, advance a pawn, uh, c, c6, f4. I bring my knight back to protect again that pawn. The, the, now, this is where I get a nice opportunity to, uh, to get my rook uh, on that file. So I, I take, there's a little exchange here, and uh, what goes on? Here we are. That's what I'm talking about. So a few moves on, uh, we get we get a nice attack on this pawn here um the advantage is not with me at all however i feel that i have something of the initiative in this game i'm not planning to castle on the king's side so i don't mind this structure here uh, i was expecting my opponent to take but he didn't he advanced his pawn uh, i'm not sure what that does perhaps he was thinking of bringing his rook up and in front of the king uh, however i take there's an exchange, and I can get in that check. And the king moved to um, f2, which was rather nice for me, I think. I bring my queen to d7, looking at this weak pawn. We then get um, the bishop comes in, but I can then... Well, I castle king's side, but I should probably have taken that pawn first. What's happening here? All sorts of things going on. Wait a minute. Um, I castle on the king's side, on the queen's side, sorry. I castle on the queen's side. My opponent, that's right, he's trying to take advantage of this king coming down here. Now, the king, king's advanced. The king looked a bit vulnerable behind these disorganized pawns or disordered pawns. But I now have a major attack coming in on the, on the king's side. So I think, my, I think I've got the initiative. I think I've got... I can keep up with my, it's what Jeremy Silman calls uh, fighting for your agenda. I think my agenda will dominate. 
Um, at the moment, you can see the advantage bias firmly in my favor here, but it fluctuates several times before we get to the end of this game. Um, I bring my queen up. So this is a great example of a move that, that um, Leiches doesn't like at all. It's probably not the most well thought through move. I'm pawn grabbing and getting closer to the king. But the king may have an escape route. Let's see how it goes. I throw in a check. The pawn can't take because it's, it's being pinned by the queen. But it does allow the king to disappear. I now avoid losing my my knight by attacking the queen protected the bishop being protected by the knight that's being attacked by the pawn and the queen moves away i now put my i'm glad i i'm glad that leiches likes that move i put my knight down here simply to attack the rook but it so yeah moving the rook over is a mistake uh, it's better to to perhaps exchange off here it's a mistake because it lets me in here. Um, the rook was guarding that pawn. And when the bishop takes, it's simply an exchange, but an exchange plus one pawn up, so it's a loss of material. And it also opens up the way to the king once again. So advantage back with me. Uh, my opponent attacks my queen, and now I grab that, that knight and... Uh, yeah, now here there's a series of moves I make um, that are weaker than, they're not ideal moves. It seemed that I was laboring my way to conclude this game. Here I get in a check, but again the king can move away, and now I have to find something to do. There's no checking. I don't have a, I don't have a, an, a, an e, a check. I mean, I can check the king and lose my queen. But there's no way to check the king. So all I can do here, so my knight check was a mistake, uh, is move over while protecting my knight from the queen. And as far as light chess is concerned, I've lost the advantage completely because it allows this move here. However, I think that I can, by bringing my knight over, I can hold the fort down here while threatening the king with my queen and also my rook on this active file. So I felt the game's a bit sticky, but there's plenty in it still to play for. And a single move, you can understand this move, trying to shoo the queen away, but it brings us back to equality. And I have a nice square for the queen, which is right down there on, um, on a6 with an eye to coming up here and attacking the king once again. So now we had, yes, this is this is a big mistake. It's a pawn grab by, by coming down, I won't see what I do, by co coming down there to grab the pawn, it's weakening this defensive line here. This rook suddenly becomes vulnerable. I bring the queen up and now there could be an exchange of queens um, or if the king escapes, I can bring in my other rook. And we now get into a situation where I decide to exchange off because the king is relatively isolated there. And then I get in my second rook. So we've got a nice attack again on the king. The king moves away. Leicester does not like this move at all. And I will show you why. Now, I have two nice ways to check the king. Uh, I chose to move my queen over here to f1, check. Now, Leicester is mainly recommending a move to, uh, the, um, the, the king moves to g3. But the king moved down to g4. And I now bring my queen in. And the next move is neither of the recommended ones. Now, here I missed a sitter. What I had seen, because I don't think I was really expecting that, I was expecting one of these two moves, I suppose. What I had seen was um, this line here, this diagonal here. I can take the pawn and attack the rook. And that's what my eye was on. So when the king moved the other way, all I did, I simply took the pawn like so, saying check and I will pick up the rook. So I'm quite, I was quite pleased with that move. What I completely missed was this lovely 
checkmate here. Checkmate, game over. But my eye was on the pawn rook diagonal thinking I'll pick up the rook and that gives me a massive advantage, which indeed it does. But however big your advantage is, it's not as big as a checkmate. So I miss that sitter of an opportunity. I check the king and I grab the rook. So I'm, I'm sitting pretty when it comes to material. Um, is there anything that white can do here? The queen can't check the king without falling. And we have a black squared bishop and the king sitting on a white square. So there's not much that white can do against my king in this move. White grabs a pawn, allowing me now to bring in my rook one way or another. So I'm thinking all the time of picking up pieces. Now, there, this probably is not the way to play because uh, we should be looking for checkmate as quickly as possible. I go the slow road, the slowest possible road to checkmate, it seems. However, my opponent also produces some surprises. So I see if I can checkmate. And then I simply give up and take the queen. And here I do something odd. I check. I take the bishop. I, it's like, what am I doing? Um, obviously, I have a massive advantage. All I need to do is move my pawn all the way up there to get a second queen. And so it's very much the slow road to checkmate. It is the road to checkmate, but it's the slowest road possible. Um, I forgot to mention that um, in this situation here, um, if instead of grabbing the queen, I had done this, it's a nice fork, king-queen fork, but it's not necessary to take the queen. It's checkmate. Next move is checkmate. The king is forced. There's nowhere else the king can go. And that is also checkmate. It's another sitter. Admittedly, you had to look a couple of moves ahead, but considering that it would have been much better anyway to have forked the king and the queen with the, with the knight, and even if I'd not seen the checkmate, just pick up the queen with the knight, uh, I still didn't manage to do it. I took the easiest road possible. I just took the queen with my rook. So I was on the road to victory, but I t it turned from a super highway into uh, into an A road and then down into a B road. And I think in the end, it was just a bumpy country track. But I got there in the end. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed uh, that, uh, that introduction to the state of play at the end of this year between myself and my regular opponent, who incidentally is making very good progress. I um, mean, our over the board games, when we get a party together, um, my regular opponent, Dr. M, has seen some very nice victories recently. So it's good to see. I think I think uh, the little chess community we're building here in Hiroshima, people are beginning to get enthusiastic, or not beginning, people are enthusiastic, but they're beginning to see some progress and results, which is, which is all a good sign and very positive for the new year and the new decade. So without further ado, let us wish everybody a happy new year and talk to you again in 2020. That's all from me, David Hurley of EasyChessTips.com, your pub chess bluffer.